A Parent Wins, an adventure of a lifetime. A global expedition dedicated to collecting stories of environmental and cultural preservation while conducting marine research aboard sailing vessel Resilience. There are times during the refit where it's like, you know, is this really worth it? No sleep, banged up, you know, you're around all sorts of dust and chemicals and your body hurts and months are going by. It's not a weekend project, it's a massive project. The past seven months has definitely been challenging. It's had its ups and downs. Leading up to the trip was probably one of the more stressful times of my life. We were crazed. The amount of things we had to get done was insane, but we did it. Just like anything, I think the hardships and, and just the experience of being ashore for so long and out of what we have been doing for the last two years has made this return to the ocean so much sweeter. I really do think that we need to be doing the work that we're doing. That's what drives, drives most of this is it's important. Honestly, we had such a quick turnaround from working on resilience to her just like getting back out there. It was like, I didn't really get that like time in between to be like, okay, resilience is like our boat again, not like our project. and. You know, we, we're, we're going out and running the boat. And so we kind of just dove straight in. And I, I feel like I had whiplash. Like it was, it was quite a transition. I don't know, we're uh, ready to go. Um, we're still like tidying, but we're ready to go. Um, yeah, I don't know, things are, are good. I'm excited to get offshore because that means I can go back to sleep. Um. I'm really hopeful that heading up to the Hudson Canyon, we see what we're hoping to see. I mean, no matter what we see, that's an observation that's great, but we, we could have magic. And that's sort of the promise of being out in the ocean in the first place, is that you can have magic at every moment. The crew on board was great. I mean, Tripp and I, obviously. Alejo, one of our filmmakers. And then Chris, a uh, recent graduate from NYU. And he's hilarious, but also crazy knowledgeable, especially about that area. It's funny heading up the coast along the same route that we took last year. Last year we went up to Maine, but it's funny sort of being back here and seeing the change, the change in ourselves and the change in the boat, the the, just the difference in weather and scenario. Every sail that you do is going to be different. The ocean's always different. It's the first time that we've been out on the water in something like seven or eight months, depending on how you want to count it. And it's really our first time leaving with resilience being what we've wanted it to be. And to have other folks aboard, we've done research sort of charters before, research work before aboard, and we do oceanographic data collection. But it's really incredible to actually be out here hosting people with the missions, the sort of missions that we want to be doing from here on out. My exposure to the deep ocean has really only been the Hudson Canyon. So being in other deep water has been really interesting. One of the things that I've been kind of like learning to grasp as I come to know the ocean a little bit is like thinking of that, thinking of places as neighborhoods as like each spot in the ocean, even though you can't really tell by looking at it, is a different place with different things and different, like, it looks different even though you can't tell. As we've moved, being able to like recognize these places as distinct has been really helpful to like coming to understand the ocean. And I think being on a boat like this, like a sailboat, where you are 
you're taking your time and you're, you're being more intimate and close with the ocean is really helpful in that. The Hudson Canyon. It is the largest marine canyon on the east coast of the United States, about three quarters of a mile deep. And it was actually partially carved during the last period of glaciation when there were lots of glaciers. The sea le level was much lower, and so the Hudson River extended out further. The Hudson Canyon is kind of the epitome of connecting the deep ocean to the shore and to people, and people don't know it exists. As they try to make it a sanctuary, that's kind of the challenge that they're, they're, they're trying to overcome, right? Is how do you connect people to this place they're probably never going to go to, they're never going to see. Even if you go there, you don't see the canyon itself. I didn't know what the Hudson Canyon was until I got a phone call from our friend Zach last fall talking about it and saying that they were, you know, interested in doing some work here. And I looked up online, started doing research, went to NOAA's website, read more about it being part of, that it's being considered to be a national marine sanctuary. And what's really cool is you're seeing a lot of places like this around the world that are being identified and people are working to protect them more, just like you would a national park in the United States somewhere, you know, these really special places. Well, the Hudson Canyon uh, being like a point of upwelling, you know, there's a reason why people go there to bird, to fish, to whale watch. And that's something that like has really stood out to me even more as we've been coming up the coast, where it's been, you know, we've had sightings, but they've been a bit more sparse. And so like knowing that we're going to a place where the conditions are just a little bit different to where it supports that kind of life is really exciting. And the fact that we have the opportunity to spend more time there in a different kind of boat than I've been on, the fact that that could mean we have different sightings is really exciting. It's best fresh though, you almost want to eat it like... Right away, we'll eat it right now. Is it still hungry? I mean, protein. This is a tiny fish. Really? Yeah. Can you get a positive ID on that? Through the light? Yeah. But uh, went down the engine room and basically our bilge was full of fresh water and an entire uh, fresh water tank empty into our bilge. And it probably, I mean, I used water this morning to, I don't know when, I don't know how, how it all came to be, but it didn't spray out, it just drained out of the hot water heater, which Completely is pretty big. Empty. Huh? Completely empty? Oh yeah. Oh. Hot water heater empty, water, starboard water tank empty. So I wasn't planning on reconditioning the, uh, the water maker until just now. I, we, I was going to make breakfast, but uh, I'll do that afterwards. It's pretty beautiful out there. I just saw a mahi jumping. You gotta grab it. Yeah, I know. It was, it was beautiful. It's going to be a gorgeous day. I mean, whatever. Busy morning. Huh? Busy morning. Busy morning. It's just another morning on the boat, right? It's almost sunset. It's around 6 or so, and we should arrive in the Hudson Canyon tomorrow around 10.30 or so, maybe 9.30. We've slowed down a little bit, but the wind's just been calming down and calming down, so we should arrive tomorrow with pretty ideal uh, conditions for, for doing the work that, that we want to get done, for doing species surveys, for getting the hydrophone in, for doing micro, microplastics trawls, data collection of all sorts, so. Tomorrow morning we get to the canyon and we'll see what we find and I'm excited just to stay in, in that area. And I say play just because it's so interesting and so much fun just to, to see what's out there and, and to be doing something productive and helpful and, and uh, constructive and hopefully, you know, the goal really for us is to 
to share how incredible this, this canyon is.